absolute chaos. I'm not even joking. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. I'm Hannah Stitfall and I've spent the last 10 years filming and photographing animals in the wild. But it's urban areas like this, like this, like this, that are now our fastest growing habitat on Earth. So now I'm on a mission to photograph some of my favourite urban species and find out why and how they're living alongside us. So I'm in Gibraltar, which is a British territory and the southern tip of Spain. Now, many of you would have guessed just from me saying where I am, what species I'm looking for today. And of course, it is the Barbary macaque. Now, Barbary macaques are an endangered species and they're the only monkey that you can find in Europe. And they're actually increasing, whereas elsewhere in their range, which spans from Morocco to Algeria, they're actually declining. So, this endangered monkey here in Gibraltar is actually doing really, really well. So this urban population could be the key to their survival. So the macaques here are really celebrated for the tourism that they bring in, despite their mischievous reputation. There's some macaques on there, macaques on there, maca macaques everywhere. Look, Gibraltar, macaques. So you can clearly see they bring in an awful lot of tourism. But what I want to see is how they're interacting with people, the actual tourists. So that's what I want to go and try and find out. Millions of tourists visit Gibraltar every year, and many have the macaques at the top of their sightseeing checklist. Wild primates across the world have shown themselves to be extreme adapters to the human environment, and monkeys have made themselves homes in cities all over different continents. But here, in Gibraltar, this is the only place in Europe where you can see wild monkeys and hopefully that's what I'm going to see today. To find the macaques I have to climb up into their territory onto what is known as the rock. Straight away I find them up to their mischievous ways. It's absolute chaos, I'm not even joking. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. It's just cars and taxis and buses continually flowing through bringing more people up here and the macaques are just hanging out. Look, look at all this, look at all this. Must have been hundreds of people come up here the last couple of hours. All these people coming into the monkeys' homes means that two species of primates, macaques and humans, are spending a lot of time together. And like any close relationship, miscommunication can lead to conflict. So these are the steps that lead to the troop at the upper rock and as you can see they're quite confined and these are really popular with tourists. Now people would think that the macaques are laying in wait to jump on people to get food but they're actually not because the top troop live just here and then the second troop live at the bottom of these stairs so this is the causeway between the two troops so that often causes quite a lot of commotion Couple that with a really confined set of stairs with lots of tourists and of course you're going to get some issues. So the best thing to do, don't touch them, take your time and keep your eyes out. So I'm going to try and head up to the top. As I get further into macaque territory, I think I need to get some more guidance. Hello Tessa. Hi Hannah. Hello, how are you? Tessa Feeney is one of the experts here, and I'm hoping she can tell me a little more about how the macaques and humans are coexisting. It's easy to see why these charismatic monkeys are so popular, but sometimes that can work against them. So we're just heading to St Michael's Cave, where we've been told there are loads of tourists there. They've just come off the buses. So hopefully we're going to get some macaques interacting with humans. Now I'm not quite sure what to expect, so we're going to have to wait and see. There's a macaque. That man just fed. Did that man just feed him? Yep. It's exactly what we don't want to see happening because obviously macaques eating sugary human foods, it's not good for them. They need to be eating their wild foods, so that is not a good sign straight away. And of course, that's what makes them more aggressive with people because they're after our food. So we're going to get out, have a look, and be a bit careful as well. 
Now in the wild you can clearly see why two different species evolve different lifestyles and niches when they're competing with one another. But essentially that's what you've got here. You've got two really intelligent primates sharing the same space. And of course the macaques are here and it's really good for tourism. They're the stars of Gibraltar. But there's clearly conflict as well. I mean, the biggest cause of death here for the macaques is road traffic incidents. And today we've seen how many cars and buses and taxis are coming through. So there clearly is conflict. I want to learn more about the macaque-human relationship. So I asked Tessa to tell me more. How are the macaques here coping living alongside people? Uh, they can cope with it. We have to understand that as human beings, we're big, we're tall, we're very capable of, of inflicting harm onto other animals. And on average, we tend to get about a thousand tourists a day coming through here. Real issue really is, is with us, we don't respect their living room. You know, this is their home. And we're coming in here in huge numbers. And if you imagine someone coming through your home, um, in vast numbers, at some points this can get a little bit um, tense and, um, and frustrating. I, wouldn't like, it. I you know. wouldn't like it at all. Yeah. It's amazing that they're here, it's an amazing sight to see them just behind us. But of course, being in the human environment, it's not, it's not great for them. But they're doing quite well here, aren't they? Yes, and when you say it's not great for them, it's structures like these are, are, are fine for them. Um, and they're able to kind of uh, use certain aspects of, of the human environment to their own good. For example, um, quite often the tarmac roads tend to be nice and warm in the mornings. So they'll often sit on them to keep warm. So if I want to try and get a photograph, right, what, what do I need to do? Not look at them in the eyes? Well, to take a photograph, first of all, we'd be too close if you were going to okay. take a photograph of me. Right, okay. So I'd advise at least a half a metre. Um, and then just be aware of how you're standing. Yeah. So, for example, I'm going to kneel down. So, because oh. I'm, I'm more Tessa, or less... Tessa, Tessa, we've just met. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, you're now towering over me. Yeah. Um, and that, that's where these things you've got to understand is how threatening um, we can be when we're looking down yeah. on a monkey. Maybe kind of lowering your body so you're less threatening, making yourself smaller. but. For the most part, they're very relaxed. They're very happy to have their photograph taken. It's time to put this new knowledge to good use. But first, I want to ask about the behavior I've seen here most. So we've seen, we've seen loads of grooming and obviously that's really important for social hierarchy yeah. like this. I mean, they seem to be doing it all the time. They're doing it on a car yes. over there. They're doing it behind us. They're mm -hmm. just totally at home, aren't they? Yeah, well, it's a full-time job kind of keeping good hair. Um, <laughs> And it's, yeah, as you were saying, it's a great bonding and social experience for them, um, brilliant for them to connect. Uh, but it does also serve a purpose of keeping their coats clean. They, they do have uh, lice. What we find interesting is that even when macaques have been, don't have lice, and, and we know that because they've been um, picked up by the vet, and, but when they're uh, released after their medical check, the macaques will still groom them and still and all that we can think this uh, is for is that maybe um, the, the groomer needs to prove that they're doing a good job. So even if they don't find a lice, they'll pretend they found a louse. That's incredible. Yes. Armed with all the knowledge I need, I head out to get my photo. Now people often confuse Barbary macaques with being apes when they're not apes at all, they are monkeys. And the best way to tell the difference between an ape like us and a monkey is the presence of a tail. But Barbary macaques have lost their tail over time through evolution. However, they still do have a vestigial tail, which is a tiny remnant at the bottom of their spine, which is exactly the same as us having a tailbone, which is a fused vertebrae. Two species coexisting so closely and openly feel special. And I think it is proving successful here to varying degrees. One thing I've loved seeing here is just how many baby Barbary macaques there are. As elsewhere, they're declining, but here they're doing really well. And I did manage to get a photograph that I'm really pleased with. 
and it was a, one of the young ones up at the top of the upper rock. Look at that, what a face, beautiful. And you know what? I really do hope that the Barbary macaques can continue to coexist with the humans here in Gibraltar.